Hi folks, do you ever find yourself needing one of these 9 volt battery connectors? Maybe for powering an Arduino microcontroller board? Or for maybe replacing the connector in a broken toy or some other device that's become corroded? Well, you can buy them quite cheaply online, but if you're like me, you probably never seem to have them when you actually need them. So here's a quick hack for making your own out of bits of stuff you might have lying around the house. First, we're going to need an old dead 9 volt battery. We're going to be taking this particular part out of the battery, and this is what we're going to use for the new connector. And then secondly, you'll need an old 9 or 12 volt uh, AC to DC power adapter, the kind that you plug into the wall. We're going to use the wire and the jack plug from this. You only need this part, though, if you want to put a plug on your connector for powering devices like Arduinos. If you're just doing a repair, then you only need the battery connector and maybe some wire. Now, if you want to use the plug to work with the Arduino or a similar device, you just need to make sure first that the plug actually fits. And the Arduino uses a 5.5 millimeter diameter cylindrical plug with a 2.1 millimeter uh, hole in the middle of it. And this is where the positive voltage goes in in this hole here. And then the negative is on the outer sleeve. Obviously, you might want to make sure that nobody else intends to use that power supply or it could cause a bit of a unwanted tension in the household. Now, I'm just going to zoom in on the actual adapter. OK, and if we look here at the adapter, you can see there's a label on it that says 12 volts and 1 amp. That's fine, but what we're just interested in here is the connector symbol. So for things like Arduinos, we need to have the center of the, the jack plug being the positive and the outer, uh, you know, the outer section being the negative. So that's the way this one is. So uh, that's probably the type you would want to be using. So you can check that yourself. Just look at the label on the power supply. Again, I suppose it depends on what you're using it for. If the device you're using has a different kind of connection, then you just make sure to match it up so that it'll work properly. Okay, so to remove the connector, we're going to need to pry the battery open using a pair of pliers or a snips. Before doing this, though, we should take a note of which side of the connector is positive and which is negative. This will be useful later on. And you can see here that the positive side of the battery is closest to the round connector rather than the hexagonal one. Okay, so I've got the battery and I'm just going to use a set of snips to cut open the battery. Now I would recommend that you wear gloves if you're doing this because just to protect your hands, uh, you don't want to end up uh, hurting yourself or scratching the table that you're working on, uh, particularly say if it's on the dining room table. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch this bit here and then I'm going to slowly pull it out. And you can see inside there's actually a bunch of small uh, cells. I'm just peeling it open, kind of like a can of tuna or something. Okay, and here we have the piece that we need. That's it. Some batteries are a little bit different inside, but essentially this is the bit that we want. And just for interest, you can see inside here that we have six little cells that are 1.5 volts each, and if you add up the 6 times 1.5, you get 9 volts. So if you haven't already done so, now's a good time to uh, cut the wire off the old power supply. Uh, just looking at two different versions of uh, cables here, uh, the way to tell which wire is which is that the one with the white coloring, or say gray coloring, will be your positive, and then the one that's just black, that'll be your negative. Okay, so these are just two different ones, pretty much the same just slightly different patterns on them. So once you've cut your cable, I'm just going to use this one here, and what we need to do is get the end of the cable, this end here, and we're just going to split it open. So we can just grab it both sides and just pull apart like that. And then what we're going to need to do is just strip off the insulation off the two ends here. So to take off the insulation, I'm just going to pull them apart a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is get my trusty snips. And I'm going to hold them in such a way, I'll just bring this up a little bit. I'm going to hold them in such a way that when I'm holding them, I'm going to keep my little finger inside the handle there so I can move this in and out. And I'm going to put my thumb up there. And that allows me to have a little bit of control over how tight I squeeze the snips. Then I'm just 
And what we need to do next is just um, apply a little bit of solder to each of these bare wire parts. And then we're going to apply a little bit of solder to the other side of this part. And then the solder is going to go here and here. And then what we're going to do is place these close together and then heat them again. And then that way the solder will join at both of these points. That will give us our connection. Now, if you remember, we were looking at the polarity and we need to make sure that we connect the positive wire to the hexagonal uh, connector on this part, because this is going to go onto the positive side of the battery. Okay, so now we're going to uh, solder the ends of the wires. So the first thing we need to do is get our soldering iron up to a nice warm temperature. And then what I'm going to do is clean off the soldering iron first before I start using it like that. Then I'm going to apply a little bit of solder to the soldering iron. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to bring it up to touch the wire that we want to tin. And then warm it up slightly. And then we bring our solder wire to touch it. And now it's tinned. Okay, so we do the same thing again. Just bring the soldering iron up to touch the wire. Then bring the solder wire up to touch the now heated wire. And it should sort of wick into it. Okay. There we go. That's that done. Next, I'm going to use this crocodile clip here, which is a very handy thing. to hold the uh, battery connector while I place a little bit of solder on the two points here. So again, just uh, always clean your soldering iron before you use it. And then place a little bit of solder on the soldering iron itself. And then we're going to press this against the metal. That might take a little while to heat up. I just want it to warm up so that some solder sticks to it. Okay, there we go. And then the same on the other side. So we want to heat the metal itself rather than just kind of sticking a blob of solder on. We want it to kind of join. And that can take a little bit of time. Let me just let it cool off for a second. So now I've just uh, repositioned the wires so that they're now over the two terminals. And again, clean the old soldering iron. And then same thing again, a little bit of solder on the soldering iron. And then we're just going to tip it off the two parts that are touching. Okay, so that's that one in, and then this one. See, because the wires have been tinned, they've already got solder in them, and then that's going to mix with the solder that's already on the terminal. So it makes a nice good connection. I've made sure as well to connect the white side to the hexagonal uh, connector. Because if we look at our battery here, if we want to connect the positive side to the positive side is here to the white side of the wire, then they have to kind of go in as opposites. Okay, and there we are. Clips on nicely. Okay, let me just zoom back out a little. Uh, clips on nicely. The only thing is, I'd like this to be a little bit more secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hot glue around that to make it that just a bit more uh, sturdy and also to reduce the risk of short circuits. So I've just bent the wires a little bit to make it uh, so that some of the plastic area is in this area here. And then what I'll do is get some of this electrical tape and I'm going to just take a section of that and cut it. And then we're going to wrap it around just the upper part up here. So what I want to do is I want to fill in this area with uh, hot glue. Okay, so we want it to join up to the edges of the battery, that battery connector. Okay, and then we're going to fill it with hot glue. I just want to make sure it sticks properly. So once the glue gun is hot enough, all we need to do then is just get the glue gun and pour in some hot glue into the hole. And what we want to do is just build up a layer that's about three or four millimeters thick. 
it should level itself. And then we just need to tap it a few times to get the glue to settle. And then leave it for about five minutes to cool down. Okay, so the hot glue has cooled down at this stage, so we just need to peel off the tape. And here we have the connector. So that's not too bad. Came out reasonably well. And it's quite solid. Okay. Um, so this one here comes out on the wide side. I have another one that I made earlier, and this one just comes out at the thinner end. So they're quite quite solid. And we'll just try it out now by connecting it up to the Arduino to see what happens. So I'll plug it in, and I'll get my wire and the Arduino and see what happens. Oh, there we go. It's working. Okay, great stuff. Now, just a little thing to note, uh, if you don't want to take apart one of your old power supplies, you can just use something like this. This is a jack plug, uh, and you can buy these online in places like Amazon uh, very cheaply, so they can work as an alternative. Okay, so just a couple of quick safety reminders. Uh, always wash your hands after handling solder because it contains lead, or it might contain lead, and that lead is not very good for you. Uh, it may rub off onto your food if you're trying to eat something, so always wash your hands. Make sure the room is well ventilated when soldering as well, because there's fumes that come from solder. And they can cause uh, things like occupational asthma when you're exposed to them in large amounts. Uh, soldering irons are hot. Make sure to use a stand when using it so that it doesn't melt things, and also be very careful not to touch the hot end. Wear safety glasses when soldering and testing circuits just in case something goes wrong and something sticks in your eye. Check tools like the power supply and soldering iron before using them in case the cables are damaged or in case there's you know, a fault with the component that could hurt you. Don't forget as well to double check the polarity of any connections. Uh, you don't want to connect things the wrong way around that can cause damage to circuits. And finally, wear safety gloves uh, to protect your hands and also try and protect any surfaces that you're working on so you don't damage them. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.